this idea that we are going to remain the same. Think of it from the perspective of a species. If, if a species does not change, it's probably going to die out. It doesn't adapt to its environment. It's going to die out. If a species adapts and changes, then it is also not there anymore. It's also gone. So, so this paradox faces all uh, systems of this type. And we have to understand what do we mean by persisting into the future? Uh, lots of people are focused on telling stories of what they don't want, right? So, so I don't want this in the future. I don't want that. The, you know, the, the, the AIs are bad. The, the body enhancements are bad. All, the, all this stuff is bad. The, the, so those are the stories of what they don't want. How about the stories of what we do want? Do you want to come back here 100 to 200 years from now and look at a mature humanity, a mature species, and see that we still get lower back pain and we're susceptible to dumb infections and cancer and, uh, you know, whatever, um, whatever cosmic ray happened to hit your DNA while you were gestating in the womb. Well, that's too bad. You've got a birth defect. That's how you stay really that that's, that that's what we want to see here in, in the future. I don't. And so, so I think we need to understand this is in no way, this is not about AI at all. This is about diverse intelligence and the idea that our children are not going to be content to uh, to just play the cards they're dealt. They are going to take move forward what we already can do to some extent and have freedom of embodiment. They're going to change everything. They're going to change their uh, their their capabilities and their embodiment in the physical world. Because let's let's not pretend that that the way we are now and our current limitations, there's some sort of optimum that was designed for us by uh, you know some sort of a benevolent optimizer that that this is where we should stay. I don't believe that for a second, and I think that our children are absolutely going to change things. And I sort of I sort of envision this uh, this conversation that you know in the future the, the kids in school you know they'll have history lessons right and they'll and they'll learn about what it was like in the past, and and I just sort of imagine being there and saying, you're you're telling me that. These people, they, they were born, however they happen to be born with, with whatever accident of, you know, evolutionary mutations and whatever, right? And, and that's it. They have to live their whole life that way. Whatever, whatever your, your embodiment is, whatever your IQ level is, limit is, whatever your lifespan is, and if you got some sort of the infection, the, like, that's it. That's how they have to live. I think, it would be, I think it will be unimaginable to future um, generations that we could live like this. One way to, uh, to unravel that, uh, that paradox is, is to realize that the paradox only exists if what you want is to persist as a thing. You know, as a as a as a fixed object, uh, th then then you have a real problem because because that kind of persistence is not compatible with learning, with any kind of change, with maturation. You know, then 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 you change for sure, and you end up in these uh, unsolvable pseudo problems. Am I still the same? You know, I've I've learned and I've changed my mind on things, and I'm no longer the child that I was. Am I still the same? You know, these are these are unsolvable, but they're also pseudo problems because the better way to think about this is not as uh, as you as a persistent structure but you as a process. So you are a process of constant sense-making. You have to interpret your memories. And, and, then, and then there really isn't an issue. That the, then, then the question isn't, do I persist or not? The question is, how do I want to change? That's a much more, I think that's a much more interesting on, on, on all levels, right? So, so on a personal level, you can ask, I mean, who cares if you persist or not? The question is, what do you want to be in the future? How do you want to change? What, you know, what do you want to be like? What do you want to be doing in the, in the future? And on a on a kind of species level, again, what do you want to see here? You know, you come back to Earth 100 years from now, what do you want to see? Do you want to see version 1.0, like modern Homo sapiens? Is that what you want to see? I'm not interested in that. I would like to see the the, the highest level of, of, of mind, the highest level of capability, of ethics, of, of interesting uh, beings living interesting lives under their own control with maximizing agency, not the outcome of, of random uh effects of, of mutation and, and other processes that they don't understand. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe my issue is I've read too much science fiction, but, but, you know, if you read, if you read some of the older sci-fi authors, you know, and, and especially some of the more philosophical, uh, philosophical ones like uh, Stanislav Lem and those kind of folks, this, I mean, nothing we're saying here would have surprised them at all. They were, they were tackling these issues long ago, you know, and this question of, uh, what what are the markers of 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 intelligence and and sentience and and consciousness? You know, in terms of encountering radically different life forms. Like I, I did a um, uh, I, I have a I have a blog post where I collected people's suggestions for a love and friendship uh, between radically different entities throughout the philosophy throughout the fantasy and science fiction, um, because that's the kind of stuff you know when people say 
oh, I don't know, you know, we need proof of, of human, we need proof of humanity certificates because uh, some of the, some of the, you know, some of the uh, work product that's going to be coming, who knows if it's, uh, you know, if it's got an AI origin, like, wow, the, you know, uh, okay. So, so, so what if there are aliens out there that, that are, are completely different? Uh, they're made completely differently. They, they blow our, uh, you know, art out of the water. You're, you're really not going to uh, pay any attention to that because they're not like us. What what is it? What you you want proof of humanity? You know, as as you, you, would you rather would you rather judge things based on their origin or the quality? I mean, I I, th I think we've done poorly uh, trying to judge on uh, on on where things like this come from versus what, what do they do for you? You know, do they elevate you? Do they advance mm -hmm. advance your your mind? And it's that same paradox that we talked about earlier. It's this idea of if you if you really you know sort of start stripping away the different. Uh, 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 qualities, then there isn't going to be anything left. And it's the gestalt, but the gestalt is going to change. Mm -hmm. And so how are you going to handle that change? Right. I mean, that's, that's part of the, the, like the existential difficulties of our, of our human condition, because everything changes. We change uh, all, all the other minds that we interact with are going to change. You know, not, none, none of us are, none of us are going to stay the same. It, look, look into the past. The, the first guy to carry an umbrella in London was mobbed. <laughs> he was mobbed and people threw, you know, threw, threw garbage at him because they were uh, shocked that uh, this guy thought he could get away from their, the, the excess, the, the, the normal human condition of getting rained on. This was, Jeez. this was considered to be normal. We are all out here. We're all going to get rained on together. That's how it is. There's nothing we can do about it. And who is this guy to try to get out of it? And so an umbrella, that's all he had. And, and this was, this was shocking and, you know, whatever. So, um, I, I think, yeah, I think, I think if you were to, if you were to bring back a, you know, a primitive man and uh, ask, uh, ask her what she thinks about, um, uh, you know, the, the, the current humans, you know, you got, you, you, you've got some glasses on, you went to school, which for, for, you know, for 12 years, it gave you this incredible, like, like brain boost that nobody else had ever heard of. And, and you've got some glasses and you've got some orthotics in your shoes and you've got, a, you know, you've had some, you know, some, some, some surgery. Uh, somewhere that uh, you know you got a pacemaker and you've got and by the way half the stuff you know you is you plus your iphone right stuff you look up because because you, you know it in a functional sense but but take that thing away you, you don't know where anything is or, or what anybody's phone number is or anything and so uh right and and you're relying on all this stuff i mean um it's it's just to, to, to that person we are already incredible cyborgs just 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 incredible and and there is no there's no putting that uh, genie back in the bottle this is i mean obviously this is gonna this is gonna crank forward mm -hmm.